about cars around the way. In a brief but impressive ceremony, Mr. Redsell Ford, president of the Ford Motor Company, delivers the first of an initial order of 1,500 Army cars to Brigadier General Charles H. Bonesteel, commander of the 6th Corps area. And so another link is forged in the chain of industry's many contributions to the national defense. The final bolts are placed, the final nuts are turned, the last minute checks and inspections are completed, and this new revolutionary type of military vehicle is ready to play a major role in the program designed to make America strong. Like industry in general, the Ford Motor Company has thrown the full weight of its engineering resources and productive capacity behind the nation's defense efforts. As Mr. Ford said in his presentation message, we are proud to add this product to the production of plane engines, the contemplated manufacture of sub-assemblies for bombing planes, the building of Army staff cars and bomb service trucks, the mass production of light alloy steel castings, and the training of naval recruits and civilian aircraft workers. We have great satisfaction in cooperating with the Army. Small in size and light in weight, these new cars are designed to carry out a number of duties in Uncle Sam's modern mechanized Army. They'll see service as scout cars and as quick troop transport. They'll be used to haul freight, to tow anti-tank guns and other light auxiliary artillery pieces. There's no stopping these power-packed vehicles when they get their orders to march. To paraphrase the slogan of the post office department, neither snow nor rain nor sleet nor mud can stay these scout cars on their appointed rounds. Ride them, soldier, and keep the reins in your hand. Here's the 1941 version of the old-time cavalryman. Boots and saddles is given away to helmets and scout cars in this man's army and how these gasoline-powered steeds can take the hurdles. Talk about leveling hills and valleys. These cars have everything beat we've ever seen. These scout cars are powered by a 45-horsepower, four-cylinder Ford engine adapted from the Ford tractor. Army and Ford engineers worked hand-in-hand -hand to improve the design of this entirely new type of military vehicle. The car is equipped with a four-wheel drive, and one of its most unique features as a field piece is its four-wheel drive transmission, which gives it six speeds forward and two in reverse. That's one reason it can take any type of terrain in stride. In tests, the scout car has reached a speed of 55 to 60 miles an hour. In ordinary scouting duty, the military crew for this car is three men, two riding in the front seat and one in the rear. But when an emergency arises and troops must be transported places in a hurry, several men can be carried. A special towing hook is built into the rear of the car so that it can likewise haul light artillery guns and freight. A distinguished group of high-ranking Army officers, government officials, and noted guests join Ford executives in the first review of these latest additions to the nation's forces. And pass inspection, these cars did. Highly maneuverable and versatile in operation, they proved themselves worthy of Army rank right from the start. Short and built close to the ground, they cannot easily be detected when in the field. Their wheelbase is only 80 inches and the overall length is 127 and one half inches. The car is but 38 inches high at the cowl and weighs only 2,100 pounds. For night operations, these scout cars have blackout lamps front and rear in addition to the conventional lighting equipment. The headlights are designed so that they can be swung around to throw light on the engine should repairs in the field be necessary at night. Whoa, holder! That's it. Give it the gun again. These cars are so packed full of power that they can climb an 80% grade with the driver alone where traction is at all possible and a 65% incline when fully loaded. Big four-wheel hydraulic brakes stop the car quickly, hold it secure on the steepest hill. Over hill, over dale, we will hit the dusty trail, for the scout cars are rolling along. Yes, sir, the new Army cars are ready and able to maintain the best traditions of the service. In any kind of weather, over every kind of country, they'll be ready to roll along carrying out the roles to which they are assigned with a maximum of efficiency. 
A special brush guard across the front keeps bushes and other obstacles from damaging the radiator. No going is too tough for these new units of the United States Army. The high command takes a ride. In today's army, the general has exchanged his famous white charger for a spirited steed of steel. It'll take him places in a hurry, wherever those places may be. We wouldn't recommend this conveyance for your Sunday afternoon drive, but when Uncle Sam's khaki-clad defenders take the field, there's nothing better than this sturdy vehicle to stand up under the tough going. A specially built rugged frame handles the severest strains and the heaviest loads. The axles are heavy too to withstand maximum shock under the severe operating strains that are met. The final test before the scout cars are turned over to the Army. Come fire or high water, these sturdy vehicles go rolling along. Whether called upon to climb a mountain or ford a stream, they'll report ready for duty. Look out, you'll get it in the face. A special ignition system is used to prevent water, mud, and dampness from disturbing electrical currents and apparatus. Like an eager puppy, these new cars can climb out of the stream, roll up the bank, and be away across the fields before you realize what's happening. Now, here they come. Having passed all the tests, they are rolling off the assembly line and into the ranks of the Army, a tribute to American industrial ingenuity. Once again, industry proves its ability to work in the cause of democracy, to do its part to keep this nation great, to keep the wheels rolling along in defense of the ramparts we watch. Thank you.